Hey everyone, today's guest is Jared Hanning. So um, I actually just hired Jared as my new mindset coach. And I think you'll see why as you listen to this episode, um, he's been working with business owners for the past decade, teaching them how to think at a higher level. Um, so he is an award-winning speaker. He's been featured on ABC Nightline, spoken on stages all across the country. He has clients all across the world. He's delivered four TEDx talks related to mindset performance and has been chosen by TED Global as the featured speaker of the week. Um, he specializes in a Nobel-nominated process that teaches you how to think at a higher level and allows you to access different paths of your brain on demand. So um, he works with a lot of high performers, mostly entrepreneurs, business owners. And he takes you through this test called a mind scan that then allows you to see like what your patterns are, what, what do you value and where do you go as your knee jerk reaction in solving problems? What do you rate as important, um, in, in the way that you handle things and wow, it's, it was super eye opening to me to do this test with him. And I just love the way that he thinks I see so much value in it. So that's why I have hired him on to help evolve my psyche here a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's so great. Um, if you guys want to learn more about Jared, well, you can just Google his name. It's J A R R O D and Hanning is with one N. Um, I say Hanning and when I'm talking to him, <laughs> I get corrected at the end of the episode. You'll see that, but um, you can also go to his website. That's mindsetperformance.co. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and jump in. Here is Jared Hanning. Okay, before we jump into the show, I've got a special announcement real quick, and it is about my higher retreats. We are finally rolling on this. This is a project that's been in the work for two years for me, and we are finally going. Our first higher retreat is going to be in April in Zion's National Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion, but oh man, it's in Southern Utah. It is incredible. Check out my Instagram for pictures if you haven't seen. It is just like one of the most magical places in the world. People come from all over the world to see this place. Um, so we are going to be doing it there April 21st through 24th, 2022. And I wanted to let you guys know we are still in our early bird pricing right now. Um, we sold a lot of it. We filled more than half the retreat in our pre-sale, but we still have one shared room left. So if you want to come with somebody and save some money, jump on that. Um, I am doing this with Be The Wellness. They are helping me put on this retreat. Be The Wellness is amazing. They are like my dream end goal of all retreats. And they have decided to help other people like me put on retreats. So it's going to be phenomenal. They're award-winning retreat um, hosts. And yeah, it's it's going to be good. So you have to go to their website. It's going to be Be The Wellness. So B-E-E. Make sure you follow them on Instagram, by the way, also. But B-E-E, The Wellness, be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire. All of the details are there. You have pricing. Um, you can register right there on the website. All of the schedule, all of the people who are coming. We have a shaman coming to do a fire ceremony the first night. We have an amazing yoga, meditation, breath work facilitator. Catherine Dixon, who is like, I don't know what to call her, my like spiritual guide in life. <laughs> um, she is facilitates the work of Byron Katie and she has an episode here on Inside Out Health. I would highly suggest listening to that. She is a life changer. She's going to be facilitating um, two days at the retreat. So I'm so excited to have Catherine coming. She's like my secret weapon. She's amazing. So um, yeah, all the details are on that website. Go check it out. Take advantage of the early bird pricing we have going um, for the next uh, week and a half. So that will end on, I guess maybe it's a little less than that by the time you hear this. That ends on August 8th at 8 p.m. So 888, okay? August 8th at 8 p.m. Mountain Time is when the early bird pricing ends. So if you want to get in on that, get in on that now. Um, and yeah, if this is something that's pinging, if you feel like you need a reset, connect to nature, connect with like-minded people, take a look inside at what you got going on and leave with some tools on how to control your stress response and challenge your stressful thoughts and find out what might be going on inside of you that you're just not seeing. This is going to be amazing. We have a sh private chef coming, all gourmet paleo meals. It's going to be incredible. So um, yeah, check that out. Be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more 
more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. All right, guys. So I would like to introduce you to my new mindset coach, Jared Haining. <laughs> um, so guys, the reason, the reason I hired Jared, let me tell you a little backstory is because I was actually with my friend Barton Scott, which if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you've heard Barton on a few times. Um, and Barton was telling me about this guy that he had met and some really great coaching questions that he had asked him. And they were just mind benders. I was like, wait, who's this guy? And he's like, yeah, his, name, his name's Jared. He's really great. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like I followed up like multiple times with him. Like, can you send me that guy's number? Cause like, I was like the way he's getting you to think that is some excellent coaching, just the way the questions were asked. And so we did our, we did our mind scan. We just did it yesterday. And I was like, I could see the value in it immediately because I, you know, obviously we'll let you go on about this, but I think that the the difference is what I was seeing is the fundamental shifting of patterns and how we think, right? And you, you know, you just mentioned, and I love that you're saying the thing that makes sense is the thing that keeps us stuck. So first let's, um, let's elaborate on that. And then maybe if you could kind of tell us what mind scan is and how it's different than just personal development program. (laughs) Right. Hey, friends, my name is Jared Hanning uh, over here on the East Coast, Columbia, South Carolina. Um, I do work as a mindset coach. Um, I run the Mindset Gym where we do mindset push-ups. And uh, here's the deal. If you are tired of hitting the same obstacles, don't have enough time, don't have enough money, don't have the right relationship support, whatever the thing is you keep running into, there are three things that are happening. These are three truths that are keeping you there. Number one, you are currently doing everything you know to do. Like pat yourself on the back. You're not a slacker. You're working hard. You're trying hard. If there was something else you could be doing, you would already done it. So what that tells us is that working harder isn't going to make a difference or it would have by now. Mm -hmm. Number two, everything you're doing makes sense. It seems like a good idea. It's logical, reasonable, rational. Well, I mean, of course it is. You're no dummy. You're not doing stuff that doesn't make sense. That'd be dumb. (laughs) What that tells us is that working smarter won't make a difference or it would have by now. Mm. And so that takes us to number three, which is a breakthrough in your situation. The thing that's going to get you off the hamster wheel and actually onto a new way of living. That breakthrough, it's going to sound like a bad idea when you first hear it. It's not going to make sense. It's not going to feel comfortable. Because if it did make sense and it did feel comfortable, you'd already be doing it. Mm -hmm. And that is the catch. Um, And the work I do, we use the Nobel nominated mind scan to print out your thinking patterns. And that allows us to see on paper right away where your next breakthrough is. You are only one thought away from your next breakthrough. So by getting it mapped out onto the paper, um, it makes things a lot faster. Yeah. Can you elaborate on your concept of these mindset push-ups? what you mean by that? Mindset Um, push-ups. My best illustration is learning to ride a bicycle. When you're five years old and they take off the training wheels and and you don't have it yet, you're a little wobbly, maybe you put a foot down, you don't want to crash. In that moment, well, remember the three truths. You're doing the best you can. You're doing everything you know to do. You're doing everything that makes sense. And in that moment, your crazy Aunt Jenny comes by 
before you've learned how to ride a bicycle, before you've learned how to balance, you're still wobbly. They just took the train wheels off and your crazy Aunt Jenny has some advice for you. And she says, what you need to do is go faster because when you go faster, it's easier to balance. And in your five-year-old brain, <laughs> you hear, that's the dumbest idea I have ever heard. I can't scary. balance going slow. It's crazy, <laughs> reckless, scary. That's yeah. why they call her crazy Aunt Jenny. Now I understand. <laughs> okay. And then one day, well, so far, if I could just pause the story right here, this is the situation that we're in trying to tell people to be confident by thinking confident thoughts. Mm. It's this idea that if you just understand what to do, you can do it, but you don't understand how to ride a bicycle. You don't believe how to ride a bicycle. Riding a bicycle hall only happens by experience. You can't mm. watch somebody else do it. You can't read a book on it. Mm. You can't take notes on it. The world that we live in is watch a video, take notes, watch somebody else. And we pass the test with flying colors. I got all the right answers on how to ride a bicycle. I know how to ride it. No, you don't actually, you don't. <laughs> you, don't. you think you do, but you don't, you don't. Yeah. So five years old, right? Uh, what you need to do is go faster. That's the worst idea I've ever heard. That's dangerous. I believe Tara, I think Terry, you said that's, that's a dangerous idea. Scary. 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 It's yeah, I already scary can't idea. do it. You want me to go faster? Uh, <laughs> and then one day you go faster. Maybe you got distracted. Maybe one of your parents pushed you a little too fast. Um, maybe you were getting better skills and slowly bound. I don't know, but you went faster and you felt balance in your body. Like for the first time you had this new sensation click open. Mm. And in that moment, your brain went, Oh my gosh, now I understand what crazy aunt Jeannie was talking about. Now I get it. Okay. Here's the deal. Before you felt the difference in your body, no amount of information made a difference. After you felt the difference in your body, no amount of information was needed. So when you go see a life coach, the life coach says, Oh, I don't know. What do you think you should do? Well, what you think you should do is kind of what has you in that situation to start with. When you go see a strength coach, they don't say, Oh, I don't know. What exercise do you think we should do today? <laughs> they say, do two of those, do three of those, come back and see me tomorrow, which is why when you go to the strength coach, all you have to do is get your fat butt to the gym and you leave with new results. So in the mindset gym, rather than talking you into thinking at a higher level, thinking at scale, believing in yourself, having more courage. And we just put you on the bicycle and you feel the shift in your body and your brain rewires itself accordingly. Mm. Show up at the gym, leave with a new way of thinking because mm. we do that through exercises for your heart and mind. Yeah. Yeah. I already have experienced this because right on our first call, Jared gave me some homework <laughs> and challenged me to some things. And I, woo, I felt that like, I literally felt in my mind as I tried to like, to just to answer the question, the way you had put it, I felt the, the difference, the discomfort of how I was thinking about the solution to this problem. Like it almost felt like doing a bicep curl or some sort of resistance training exercise where I was like, Oh God, this is different. Oh, that's not, that is not my normal pattern <laughs> oh, at oh. all. Whoa. You know? So I was feeling that immediately. And I'd, I'd love, I don't know if it's getting too much into the nitty gritty of the mind scan and what you do, but I love, would you mind sharing about the leadership V because I thought that was so incredibly compelling for me. Do you mind sharing that or is that too yeah, broad? Yes. Yes. Leadership <laughs> V is bonkers. Um, like something weird gets unscrambled in your brain. As soon as you see it, it's, it's bonkers. <laughs> yeah. um, if I could talk just a wee bit about that yes. weird feeling you get in your body. Yes. Um, yes please. So we've got the three truths, which you're, you're already working hard. You're already working smart. And so your breakthrough is first going to sound like a bad idea. So on one level, we, we have this concept that if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Um, this concept that if it feels uncomfortable, it's probably the doorway to a new way of living, a new way of thinking. This does not mean that it's a better way of thinking hmm. or a better way of living. All it means if what you're currently doing isn't working, here is an alternate way to think about it. 
Mm-hmm. Go try out the alternate way of thinking about it. You can always come back to what you have. Love now, that. what most people tend to do is like we're shopping for clothes and I hold up a shirt and they say, but I don't like green shirts. I'm not asking you to like it, but I don't like shirts. I'm not asking you to like shirts, but I'm not in the market to buy a new shirt. I'm not asking you to buy the shirt. Try it on. Tell me how it feels and then take it off. Yeah. Now we've given your body a new experience that it can't get any other way. Right. Um, Okay. So the feeling is usually your clue. What's comfortable kills us. What challenges us changes us. Now let's get into the leadership B. So uh, we call it the leadership B. It's just a a byproduct of the way things are mapped out and the particular graph that we use in the mind scan in another format. It might be the circle of influence or the square of foundational responsibility, whatever, you know, it's just how it's mapped out on paper. Um, And, but the way it's mapped out is a very sharp contrast with the hustle and grind entrepreneur mentality. Um, The achiever mentality uh, they, they hustle and grind. They burn the candle at both ends. They pride themselves on getting things done. Um, they're really, really good at taking a massive action and getting results and getting the ball rolling. They're really, really good at that. The downside is because their brain solves problems by taking action, their brain has a tendency to look for action to take. And this is why their to-do list always has more on it than they have time to get done Mm -hmm. because it's looking to solve problems by doing Mm -hmm. Um, and working harder and faster doesn't clear that situation up. And this is the trap. This is back to the blind spots of our ways of thinking. It makes sense that action gets results. So when you look at your to-do list and there's more on there than you have time to get done, the brain goes, oh my gosh, there's more here than I have time to get done. Therefore, I have to work harder and faster. (laughs) And that makes sense. Action gets results. So you work harder and faster and you just keep telling yourself tomorrow's going to be different. Next week's going to be different. This year, it's going to be different. But at some point, you got to look back over the past three years and realize you've been saying the same thing for three years and not a darn thing's changed. You're not as lazy as you think you are. You really are working hard. But if you're lost in a new city, driving faster on the wrong road isn't going to help. You have to pull over and look at the map. And Mm -hmm. this is like kryptonite to the achiever. I don't, I don't have time for planning. I don't have time for analysis. I don't have time for paperwork. I don't have time for forms or documentation. I've got too much to do. Mm -hmm. So pulling over to look at the map is like, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, now let's look at a different way of thinking. This is the, um, the, the true CEO. This is the business owner. The business owner doesn't do anything. And the reason is, and if if you're creating a new poster to put up on your office wall, the poster needs to say, if I'm doing the work, I'm falling behind. If you're doing the work, you're falling behind because while you're doing that task, no matter how good you are at it, oh my gosh, there's 27 other things that aren't getting done Mm -hmm. and you can't solve a bad strategy with stubbornness. So instead of doing something, there's another way of thinking that says, how can I not ever have to do this again? How can I cause this to happen without requiring me? This is a totally different way of thinking. This mm-hmm. involves systems and process and delegation and, and a lots of hard thinking about efficiency and scale. This involves weird things about relationships and how people feel and emotional bank deposits and connections that way. And while you're doing this, it doesn't feel like you're getting anything done, especially if you're that hustle grinder or achiever, because right. you're planning. That's not doing something. You're making people feel good. That's not doing something. Well, what a waste of time. I could have gotten something done. Well, yes, but if you're doing the work, you're going to be the one doing the work tomorrow. So instead, we build processes and people. And, and the way that gets mapped out on the mind scan, it looks, it makes it kind of like a leader, uh, a V shape. The challenge is our nervous system, if you're an achiever, is wired for action. So it feels painful to plan to build processes and relationships. And you you can't like, you can't solve a bad strategy with stubbornness. You can't like force your way into liking it. You can't push through that, which is the reason you go to motivational seminar 
come home, nothing changes because that pain, pleasure reward circuit is keeping you comfortable. Yeah. In the mindset gym, rather than trying to motivate you, well, just suck it up, buttercup. You need to learn to like doing things you don't know. No, we, we put you on a bicycle and your heart and mind have an experience they haven't had before. And your mind rewires itself and goes, oh, now I get it. And then you leave that experience naturally looking for ways to cause things to happen instead of looking for ways to get involved, making them happen. Mm, so good. So good. Yeah. That, I mean, that right there, if that didn't resonate with a lot of you, like, I mean, it, even just doing that yesterday, you know, Jared, it's funny. I woke up this morning and I had these pictures that I've been waiting to hang up on the wall. Cause I just moved. And what did I do? You know what? Today I'm just going to hang those up real quick. For, it's like, first thing I like roll out of bed and I'm like, I'm like, look at me. Look at me. I am just, I'm getting my little dopamine hit by my doing That's right now. And like just straight into it. And what do I, when I walk by later, I'm like, oh, that looks so good. <laughs> I was like, dude, I am totally wired this way. So it's so cool. I, it's like, uh, I, I, right now I feel like the person, like the client who comes to me and they know everything about being fit, except they're not you know, <laughs> they've read all the books and the podcasts and they, they can just tell you all about form and, you know, consistency and all the things, except they're not doing it. You know, I, I can see that, that I'm in that place. I'm like, cool. So I'm excited to see what comes because I've, I've learned through, I guess, fitness, the value of I, I actually just was on a podcast saying the same thing. I was like, there's a diff. I was getting really rude. I was like, uh, I was just like, if you just contextually know it, you don't know, you don't know anything <laughs> when I'm sorry, in terms of fitness, I'm just being real. It's like, if you're not actually living it, you know, you don't know, you think, you know, you know, and so I can see that I'm in that place with what you're talking about right now. And I'm excited to see the, 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 the direction my mind can go when I train it in a different way. So pretty fun. Um, that's, let's. That that's a great statement. Um, if you think, you know, you probably don't know. Yeah. Um, it's similar to that. If it makes sense, <laughs> then it's not your doorway. Um, and this is a trap that we fall into when somebody is sharing with a new concept or new idea is we tend to say, Oh yeah, it's like that thing I do when I'm lifting weight. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> like as long as you think it's like that, it's mm. not actually going to transform you. It's mm. not actually novel. Yeah. It's like, it's like our mind latches onto familiarity, right? <laughs> so we're only looking for the part of it where we can resonate with, cause that's safe and comfortable, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk about some case studies. Yes. 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 Okay. Are you mind sharing. Um, now, uh, disclaimer, uh, the work I do is not for everybody. Um, and me, I am not a good fit for everybody. Uh, some people that this work is good for, uh, entrepreneurs, people who feel life is calling them to something bigger, but they aren't sure what that is. And so they have a frustrating disconnect with the pull inside them and the clarity where to apply it. People that uh, have a lot of clarity on what life is calling them to, and they are frustrated that they're not making progress. They don't mm -hmm. seem to have the time left over or the resources left over or the relationships left over. Um, this is very good for those people. Um, people that tend to enjoy the fulfillment in life that comes from um, simplicity. Uh, like for example, if you, if you work a, a job, if you're employed and you work for somebody else, your life is very simple. Do these things and this amount of time go home. It, it's a very simple life. It's not about like personal fulfillment or personal growth or personal challenge. If that's you, the mind scan isn't going to be that helpful. Um, it tends to work better for people that have a strong drive to maximize their potential and answer what life's calling them to. So let's look at a couple of situations that people fall into. Um, one of them is in relationships, communication. Now I want you to think kind of abstractly about the role language plays. For example, let's say that um, you have a $200 cell phone bill and it's due tomorrow and the Ukrainian hackers have taken over absolutely all of your bank accounts. So the bill's due tomorrow. If you don't pay the bill, you're going 
to be out of business because that's how you work with your clients. That's how you onboard new clients. That's how you interface with your team, whatever it is. Let's just pretend that happens yeah. to your cell phone. Just pretend. And it's $200 and it's due tomorrow. And the Ukrainian hackers have all of your money. How would you handle that? What would, uh, what would you do? Well, Tara, Tara, what would you do? Mm. You're, you're resourceful. How would you solve that? Um, I think I would ask some friends if they. <laughs> good, good. I would ask some friends. Okay. <laughs> Give me two other things you could do. Ask friends is one, and that works very well. Excellent answer. Two more answers. Um, I think I would call the cell phone company and tell them my. I would situation. call the cell phone company. I love that answer, and it's the one that most people forget. Um, so <laughs> good job bringing that early into the equation. <laughs> one more possible thing you could do to solve this problem. It's well, due tomorrow. Don't have access to your funds today. Uh, ask ask a friend if they could pay the bill for you and pay them back. Great. Um, I go to a, I go to a friend for a loan. Yeah. I go to a friend for a favor. I go to the company to explain my situation, plight with them. Yeah. All of those will totally work. People have said I would go into my garage and sell things. People have said I would get the lawnmower and go down the street and and make the two hundred bucks that way. Um, people have come up with like all kinds of ways, but here's the common thread in all of those solutions. $200 is a byproduct of being in communication, of talking to the cell phone company, of talking to your support system, your friends and family, of talking to your neighbors. Money is a reflection of the conversations we're having. Hmm. So if you don't have the results in your life, Odds are it's not showing up in your communication with the world. More conversations of value, more resources coming inside. Now let's, let's look at what that happens in the relationship space. We've got a lady, she's making 300,000 doing publishing. She's helping people get their books written, get them published, get them distributed. And that's what she does. In the meantime, she has four little kids at home, eight years old and younger. She works during the day. Um, she comes home, she's got these four little kids and she works at home because like homes require stuff. There's like cooking and cleaning and shopping and helping with homework and getting dressed and showering, like, you know, just stuff. There's a lot of busy stuff that has to happen. So she's working all day. She's got four little kids at home. She comes home and she can't be present with them because she's so busy having to work right in the mm -hmm. business of home. Right now her spouse, great guy, great guy. I, I, I want to, Establish that it wasn't <laughs> like she wasn't in a non supportive environment, but it's not working. And she's having the same conversation for eight years and it's not working. Not because he's not a great guy, he's just not hearing her. Or if he is hearing her, it's not showing up as value in her world. Mm -hmm. So she is going unseen, unheard, and unvalued, not for lack of trying. And she's doing all the stuff that we do. And you know how well all that stuff works. So it goes to the mind scan. Notices something about the way her brain solves problems. Gives us her access to communicating. Remember, money is a byproduct of communication. Gives her access to communicating in a way that makes sense in his head. Mm. Same conversation she's been having, only by structuring it differently, it takes mm -hmm. a different route through his head and his brain attaches a different emotional value to it. Mm -hmm. So she has this conversation and in 10 minutes, prints 20 free, no, 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 10 free hours in 10 minutes, 10 free hours every week to be present with her kids. Meaning taking all that stuff that was in the space, the cooking, the cleaning, the shopping, the homework, the preparing, all of that stuff. And they created a new way for that to happen without her. So she could spend her limited time and energy being present, connecting with her kids. Nice. But realizing how this works, she takes that same concept, goes to her team. Now remember, she's, I mean, she's making six figures, multiples 300,000. She's got more than enough resources. Why doesn't she just hire somebody to solve that problem? Well, she'd been doing what made sense. And we know how well that works. <laughs> so she has the conversation in a different order. So it takes a different path through her team's minds. They recognize it differently. And in that conversation, she prints 30 hours a week 
to be out of operations in her publishing business, working on structure and scale and creativity, which is where she needed to be working anyways, simply because she got clear about the blind spot that her brain was trying to solve problems with. And Mm -hmm. she was open to a new way of thinking about communicating those issues. So relationship, you want time with your kids? We need to learn how to speak in a different pattern. Mm. Okay. Let's look about time and money. Got a lady who loves her day job and happens to love her side job. Now her day job is working for a nonprofit, very personally fulfilling for her, her side job. She's making cookies. Now I say making cookies. I'm sure you've seen these things on Instagram or Pinterest. They're like museum works of art. It's just (laughs) ridiculous what these people are doing with cookies. That's what she does. Um, Like the golfer, John Daly, Mm. when he um, is in town, he gets cookies from her. Mm. Um, The, the Marine Kyle, the, the famous Marine, right. That does the book tour and all that. He gets his cookies for his book tour from her. I mean, she is absolutely slaying it in the cookie space. Okay. Uh So she's got orders out the wazoo. Now she would work her 40 hours And then she would come home and work another 50 hours, nights and weekends, burning the candle at both ends, making cookies. Mm. Takes the mind scan. We take a look at how her brain is solving problems. And we can see the blind spot with it makes sense to solve problems that way. It does produce limited results, but because it makes sense, it's also what's keeping you back. So a couple of mindset push-ups, rewire the brain how it's pain, pleasure gets attached to what makes sense, start solving problems differently. And in the first year, she tripled her cookie revenue. She cut her hour production in half. Wow. This is an exponential change, generated more than enough revenue for her to leave her day job. Wow. She wanted to do that. Just because she's thinking differently about how to solve these problems. Remember, if it made sense to you, you'd already be doing it. Yeah, this, uh, thank you for those the case studies. This is funny because this has been coming up so much with my, uh, I have a little group thread with my friends and it just keeps coming up. Like how come uh, Elon Musk and all these, you know, high performance people have that they have, we know this, they have the same amount of hours in their day as us, but why are they creating so much differently with those same hours than we are? And we're like, it's because of the way we think we know it's because of the way we think. And then, <laughs> and then you come in, I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Cause I, I definitely learned over and over. I at least have the, enough foresight to know that Every single result I get in my life is because of the way I think. It's all through my lens of perception. It's just that that's what I'm creating, you know? And when I was religious, I created life out of that structure and belief system. You know, when I was super uber obsessed with fitness, that's what mattered most. Everything matters the most about this, you know? And like, yeah, so I've I've realized as I've gone through these shifts, I'm like, oh, wow, if you start thinking differently, your whole life change, all your unconscious behaviors, you know, your patterns, your habits, how you show up and every moment of the day changes. So it's so cool what you were doing. And I want to, I, I kind of want to hit on this because like I can tell already just from like one experience that what you're doing is so very different than like, well, I'm going to go through a personal development program or I'm going to you know, take Myers-Briggs and now I know myself. <laughs> <laughs> How well do we all know ourselves from Myers-Briggs? It's like, come on, you know, like it's really made some big change in your life. No, it's just like your identity got wrapped up into it a little bit. So can you, can you, <laughs> can you talk about how mind scan is different than some of these other popular, you know, mind analyzing tests out there? Ah, yes, yes. Um, they, they have their place. Uh, they do. I wouldn't poo poo them entirely. Yeah. Um, the majority of assessments and tests out there tend to be personality based. Um, here's what we know about personality is that, um, self-confidence doesn't really make a difference. Um, there are people that have the worst self-esteem ever and they have incredible lives. Um, there are people that have great self-esteem and their lives are nothing but struggle. Like there is no connection. Hmm. Um, also personality, outgoing, introverted, you know, happy, sad, also no connection because you find examples all right. across the board of things that you wouldn't think would be successful. And they are absolutely slaying. True. It. When you take one of the, um, personality based types of assessments, um, they tend to get the information by having you f- answer questions. Um, when you go to a party, do you look for somebody, you know, do you look for somebody you don't know? 
Mm -hmm. um, when you get a bill, do you open it over the trash can or open it over the counter, right? Mm -hmm. Questions. And because they're asking questions, your subconscious is going to work gaming the system, <laughs> answering based on how it wants to be seen, or it's trying to predict why they're asking that. Right. <laughs> so if your subconscious is gaming the system based on what it thinks they're asking or looking for, or how it wants to be perceived, or maybe, well, I'm working on this quality of myself. I'm trying to get better at it. This would be like you going to the doctor and the doctor walking into the room with somebody else's test results. That's about how helpful it is mm -hmm. to take an assessment that's asking you questions because mm -hmm. you're not getting the real answer. Mm -hmm. You're getting the answer your subconscious is trying to manipulate, that mm -hmm. it's trying to not be seen by. Mm -hmm. You want the doctor to show up with your test results, with what's actually real. That's one of the things the mind scan does different. It's not asking you questions. You have no idea the information it's looking for. You can't yeah. game the system. One of the most common remarks that people make after taking the mind scan is, did I do it right? <laughs> because it is so different from what they're used to. Yeah. Okay, a couple other things. The, um, the majority of personality assessments out there, they tend to give you a label. You are this category of numbers, letters, a rabbit, rock, bird, tree, squirrel, yeah. whatever it is, right? Yeah. And this is exciting at first because you have this label. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy after all. And then you're like, <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful that 25% of the population is just like me. I found my people. This is so wonderful. <laughs> okay, this would be like going to the doctor. And the doctor says, you've got this condition. Don't worry. We have a 60% success rate treating it. I don't care. What side of the 60% line am I? That's what I need to know. And that's the difference between getting feedback that's a population comparison and getting feedback that is, this is where you're at on the map. Yeah. So the mind scan, it doesn't give you a label. There's no right, wrong, good, bad. There's no comparison to other people. All it says is this is a scientific measurement of how your mind values and solves things in the world. Because of that, we can see your strengths that haven't been fully leveraged yet. We can see blind spots that might be getting over leveraged. We can see breakthrough thoughts that we just haven't tapped into yet. It gives you this bird's eye view of the whole corn maze. And so you can plot your route out of it really quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I like, I like that. There's, there's no like judgment or like, <laughs> you know, a shortcoming feeling. At least I didn't feel that way. It was just like, Oh, okay. It's just um, observing my, my patterns. And when you get a take, a, get to take a look at your pattern. I mean, it's similar to like, okay, with health coaching, it's like, what's your pattern? Oh, when I get really upset, I eat. It's always the same thing. It's, it's, it's somebody has ice cream, somebody has cookies, somebody has uh, sugar, sour candies. It's always the same thing because it's just that knee jerk reaction pattern. I have this trigger. I have this response, you know, and it was cool to see like just a little more in depth of like where my brain, uh, values, solutions, like how I value the way to solve problems. That was very eye-opening for me. So I really appreciated that because it's like, oh, okay, that's my normal pattern. And then it, the result of that was like, okay, well, if my, so mine particularly was by doing, right. I solve problems by acting, doing, and it's like, okay, no wonder, <laughs> no wonder I am like, I've just been in this space of like, something's got to give guys just being real. I was like, do I, do I have to let the podcast go? Like what something's got to give? Cause I'm not doing no, all of this anymore, you know? So, um, anyway, the podcast isn't going yet, but <laughs> <laughs> see what happens after I work with Jared for a while. <laughs> um, what are like some of the most common patterns that you see in people that like hold them back Is my common, is my pattern pretty common the doing, you know, as a way to solve problems or what are some, you know, typical things that people could look at in themselves that they might want to just examine on how they solve their problems? Um, I, would, I would say the majority of the population, their mind solves problems by taking action. Yeah. And so it, they look for action to change. Um, this isn't wrong. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, we, we need all ways of thinking. Um, yeah. This is very good. I would say if, if somebody is just getting started, if they're like leaving their corporate job and they're going into entrepreneurship, this is probably the most helpful mindset they can have is that you solve problems by taking action. Don't try to figure it out. Just go screw it up. 
get out there and do it. Right. Uh, yeah. I totally agree. Jared, you'll like this. I, I, when I was hanging my pictures, I started mathematically calculating how uh, the distance of this bench I'm hanging them over and how far they need to be. And finally I was like, uh, was, I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just, just, just going to go, go for it. <laughs> I don't care if I have to <laughs> change a couple holes. Like <laughs> it's good. You know? Like So <laughs> I was just observing myself. I'm like, this is hilarious. That is exactly like <laughs> my pattern. <laughs> Okay. But, but, yeah. Awareness. Like, that, you know. that, that's super cool. <laughs> yeah. So some people, they solve problems by connecting with people. Um, their mind values how the other person feels. Yeah. Um, and they, they think of everything through that lens of how is this person feeling? What would make them feel better? Um, and this is great. They make yeah. incredible like um, bedside Friends. banner hospital <laughs> yeah. workers. Yeah. Um, they make incredible party guest host, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, sales. They they do amazing at sales. They build mm -hmm. rapport so well. They, this is the ideal outward facing person for any company. This is yeah. who you want on the outside. Yeah. Um, the downside is they tend to struggle with leadership management positions. Um, it's very mm -hmm. difficult for them to give clear feedback. Um, okay. This is not how our company does it. You turn right at this intersection and only use the blue folders in this situation. It's very difficult for them to give clear feedback because they don't want to hurt the other person. They don't want to feel bad. And so what happens is they tend to sugarcoat it. You did good. Try harder next time. And mm. the person is left with, uh, what, what? I don't, what, what? Uh, am I supposed to do something different? I, I'm, not yeah. I'm not sure. I don't understand. Right. Um, so it's challenging for leadership. It's nearly impossible uh -huh. for delegation because they don't want to burden you, make you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So they tend to say, oh, don't worry here. I'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. Let me help you. And then taken to an extreme, they get really, really frustrated because it seems like people around them are frustrated. I don't understand why these people are upset with me. I'm just trying to help them. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to help them. I just want them to feel better here. Let me help you. <laughs> but for the other person, let me help you gets interpreted as you don't trust me to do it. Mm. So let me help you becomes kind of an offensive, an act yeah. of kindness gets, you know, an act of offense. And so for the person who values how people feel the most, they're the right. most like frustrated. <laughs> I don't understand why. Wow. Right. Um, and then there's, there's people that solve problems by um, analyzing and thinking. And yeah. we need these people dearly. They give us computers. They give us assembly <laughs> lines. They give us tax codes that like we need people that can see the big picture and the whole yeah. spreadsheet of life. But sometimes if that's the only thing they value, they become kind of like pedantic assholes and they have no people skill. Yeah. Um, and without people, nothing happens. <laughs> so everybody, the elegance of the system breaks down. Everybody has like the programmer joke. Sorry, computer programmers, but I've heard that so many times from like my friends who work in tech and computers. They're just like, you just you you just love them. You just know that they're not going to be the most personable, <laughs> but they're like they're great people. They're just <laughs> very direct and <laughs> not really thinking about feelings a lot. Like I hear that a lot from my friends who work in computer engineering. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> that value is just so high. And and again, going back to that leader. V though, like what I like that you were teaching, like the, the CEO, the typical CEO. So you had me think of somebody that I know who's running multiple huge companies and they've got like all these things that they're managing, but they seem to always have time for you no matter what. Like, I love that. And I have somebody like that. I instantly thought of, and I love that you're saying that those people really value people and and uh, what would, where would you put for it? Like systems, process, or, systems, or planning, 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 planning and yeah. people mm -hmm. more than, do, and like they really don't ever process think I'm going to do it as a solu immediate solution. Right. So I, that was a cool, really cool insight. And I love that you share that. Um, okay. There, there are some, some traps that it's easy to fall into in, in that route. Um, many mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, are smart people. They see something in the marketplace that's possible. They want to make it happen. Yeah. And they, these are smart, scrappy individuals. They figure it out. 
I mean, they're pioneers. They blaze a new trail and we'll just build the bridge when we get there. They are so resourceful. That is me. (laughs) And that makes them so successful to a point. Mm -hmm. Um, They need a website built. So they'll go watch a YouTube tutorial on how to build a website. They need to run Facebook ads. So they'll go watch a YouTube tutorial on how to run Facebook ads. They need to, and and in the beginning, that's great because they don't have the money to hire someone to do it. So they just get really good at doing it on their own. But then you reach a point to where you can't do anything without causing 27 other things to fall behind. Yeah. And that's the difference between the six figure company Mm -hmm. and the 10 figure company. Because the people that run billion dollar companies are incompetent buffoons (laughs) because that's what works. If you're doing the work, you're falling behind. And so what they do, they're like, who's the best person to do this? And what's the best order to do it in? These people in high school had dyslexia. They were incapable of passing their own academics. They had to, had to, had to rely on the help of people around them. Mm -hmm. And they were captains of the football team or captains of this cheerleading squad. Even though intellectually they were hindered by their disability, they had incredible social skills to make people like them and enjoy being around them. And they enjoyed telling other people what to do and delegating. And that skill that served them and got them through high school is what allows them to run a billion dollar company. Meanwhile, the scrappy person who got good grades and always found a way to do it is still stuck (laughs) in a business where they're always finding a way to do it. Yeah. yeah, uh, I'm I'm assuming you've read the book, The E-Myth. E-Myth. Thank you, (laughs) Gerber. Mankind. <laughs> so I'm just backing up what you're saying um, with, I'm in a mastermind with some really high performers. And one of the guys in there was like, Hey Tara, I- I'll mentor you a little bit. And I just, the first thing I really need you to do is read the e-myth. And I'm like, okay. And so if you guys haven't, and it, it gave you guys some context, his problem that he was trying to solve in the mastermind was how to some guidance and counsel because he was quickly scaling from 500 million to a billion very fast projected in like a year. So that's the level of business he was doing. And I read the e-myth and if you guys haven't read it, it's basically in, in a nutshell, what you're saying is like a lot of people become entrepreneurs thinking I will just work for myself. And that's all they ever do is they literally just create a job for themselves and they just work now for themselves, but they do all the work, you know, and how he's sharing these similar principles of how a, a true CEO, it would be better if you had no idea, like if you started a sailboating company and you had didn't know anything about sailboats, right? That would be a more intelligent way to start a company versus if you were an expert on everything in sailboats, you know? And, um, and I'm sharing that because I, what's cool is like, I read the book, I read the e-myth contextually. I understand (laughs) what he's saying. Okay. But I'm just like the fit person who's not fit. (laughs) I'm like, I, but I don't quite know how to get my brain to think like that more often. I mean, it it helped. I hired some more people. I started, you know, writing down lists of what am I doing that I don't need freaking need to be doing, you know, kind of got there, but I'm excited to do this brain rewiring where my, my immediate knee jerk solution is that is forming that, you know? And so anyway, I'm I'm excited about that. (laughs) Great opportunities. Yeah. So, um, I guess in closing, you know, you've done a lot of Ted talks, you've had really amazing client success. Is there anything you want to leave the audience with that might help them? They're like, okay, I want to start. I mean, besides doing the mind scan, obviously, um, are there any resources or places that they could start if this is like piquing their interest? If it's piquing their interest, um, you can obviously just come by the website, mindsetperformance.co. You can try the mind scan for yourself. Like yeah. don't take my word for it. Don't take previous, just try it for yourself. And if yeah, it's try not on the green fit, shirt. get rid of it, just the try it, shirt. you know, green shirt. <laughs> um, podcast. If you want to hear stories of people, mindset performance, what I would say though, is outside of just trying the mind scan for yourself outside of doing the mindset pushups, um, outside of learning to think at a higher level, your problem, whatever's going on is only your problem because you don't have a bigger problem. Now, I know that sounds like really hard and offensive because in your world, when you have your problem, it's real to you. It (laughs) feels real. Like maybe it's a, maybe it's a disease. Maybe it's a bankruptcy. Maybe it's a divorce. Like it feels real. And so on the surface, this seems like a really 
uncaring thing to say. And here's how it works. The only reason you have that problem is because you don't have a bigger problem. Um, so let's say uh, my friends who um, are struggling with their, their weight or their fitness, and well, that's their problem because they're struggling with their weight and fitness. And I, and I don't say that disparagingly, um, but I have friends who sitting on the couch because they're out of breath after a flight of stairs and something in them goes, oh, hell no, never again. And they go online and they find the closest triathlon and they sign up for it and they have no business doing that. I mean, any doctor would say you were out of your mind. You're going to kill yourself. Absolutely not. But they throw their hat over the fence and now they have a bigger problem. How am I going to stay alive for 120 miles? They are up to something way bigger. And while they're training, they couldn't even tell you where the nearest donut shop is. And it's not because they're disciplined and it's not because they're focused and they're not special. They're just up to something bigger. How am I going to stay alive? Parents that are having trouble with their teenage kids. Oh, you don't understand my kids. They're so rebellious. They won't, as if you weren't a teenager, please. My kids are this and my kids are that. And they don't understand this. And they're just, okay, I got it. That's your problem. And the reason that's your problem is because, well, that's your problem. But then there's other parents who in the pit of despair, when things are not working with their kids, they go on Facebook and they say, guys, I'm writing the book on success with your teenage daughter. It's going to be released in August. <laughs> and they hit send on that published post and they go, oh crap, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. <laughs> And they go to work writing the book because they aren't standing for their relationship with their daughter. They are standing to fix this for everyone else who has the same situation all across the world. And now it's no longer their problem because they're up to something bigger. And when you're up to something bigger, your mind just naturally thinks of more elegant solutions and you become the vehicle, like the antenna that resonates with things that work. It's wow. just passing through you out to the book. You're not writing the book because you know what you're talking about. You're not writing the book because you have something to say. You're writing the book to find out. And you're just willing to be the vehicle that it passes through. Wow. You only have that problem because you're not up to a bigger problem. Huge. Huge. And I, you know, if you guys have listened to other episodes, we've heard similar stories with health where someone had, was diagnosed with a disease. You're never going to be able to walk again or whatever. And they went to work on, no, 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 no. How can we solve this for everyone? I can't be the only person that's been told this. This is BS. How can I solve? And so when they got outside of themselves, instead of this little like, oh, I have this and I just have to sit in my little chair and die. They, they went into that same mode of like, how do I solve this for everybody? I'm going to be the person that finds the answers of why you don't have to be in a wheelchair the rest of your life if you get this diagnosis, you know, and it, the solution, solution, solution. So I love that so much. Super powerful. Um, all right, guys, if you guys want to get more of Jared, which I know you do, you can just Google his name. Honestly, it's J A R R O D Haining. I'm saying that correct. Right. Jared. It's close. It's how it's spelled. It's um, Hanning. It's just Hanning. That, that's how I was told it was right. pronounced, My but bad. it is Sorry. not. It's a mismatch. <laughs> so I All cannot right, fault sorry. anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, you know, it's Hanning, but it's with one N and you can see his TED talks. So you can go to mindsetperformance.co and get all the info anywhere else they can find you, Jared. Well, I mean, the socials, like everybody's on Facebook these days. Um, What's your gram? I am not on the gram. Not on the gram. I am all not. Right. All right. You can find him on Facebook guys <laughs> <laughs> and we'll link everything below in the show notes. Jared, thank you so much. I will be talking to you soon and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your just badassery with the, with the <laughs> podcast crew today. Thanks for having me.